nation, what he's doing in my family. All I know is that God has to bring me and my family out because I dedicated myself to him. Let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. And so you must understand that with everything going on, there's a war in the spirit realm. There's a war happening in the spirit. There's a war between the uh, darkness and light. And because you are light, you got to understand that as the body of Christ, you have something to say about all of this. And God is waiting on you to say something. Nobody in here want to talk now. In other words, it's not the time to tuck your tail between your legs and run in the corner. It's not the time for you to sit back and let the enemy consume the world when you're not doing anything. Story in the Bible, let me hurry up. I've been talking about it for a while because he's the one, you see him in the Bible, he's a great worshiper. He plays the hearts. The heart and drive out devils. He plays the heart, and when he plays it, it soothes the spirit that's messed with Saul. David is somebody that we love to talk about. But everybody talks about David, but nobody talks about him uh, being, uh, he has, he's bivocational. He's a worshiper on one end, but he's a warrior on the other end. When trouble hit, he didn't run from trouble. He ran to trouble. Yes, sir. So the Bible says here, watch this, that David, when uh, the Philistines was getting ready to fight Israel, that there was a valley between the two of them. You can find this in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Um, there's a battle going on between the two of them. And uh, the Philistines are in the valley. Israel is on the mountaintop. And the Bible says that at that moment when they were getting ready for battle, that shortly after that, they sent their champion out. And the champion came out and he had an armor bearer that would carry his shield. And he came out, and when he came out, Pastor Clemens, the Bible says that he came out and he was about nine feet tall. And he was their champion. The enemy sent out his best to defeat the army of the Lord. Sent out who we call Goliath. He's nine feet tall, and he comes out, and they said, who y'all gonna send? And he started talking trash about God and the people of God. And the Bible says he talked so much trash that fear consumed Israel. I'm going somewhere. Fear consumed the people of God because they succumbed uh, to the threats of the enemy. They allowed the threats uh, to get in their ear and cause fear to grip them in such a way that they paralyzed and almost, they were paralyzed but almost lost the fight by default. And while they were fearful, somebody said, God always has a plan. Always has a plan. He always has a plan. The Bible says that shortly after that, that uh, Jesse tells David to go and take some, yeah, take some supplies to his brothers. Mm -hmm. Now David is already anointed, but David is in the backyard and nobody knows his name. Nobody knows uh, much about him. He's in the backyard doing all the dirty work. It's not the people that's out front that God is looking for. It's the folk that behind the scene that nobody else can see that he's getting ready to use in this hour. See, the reason why you ain't seeing nobody step up that already got a name is because God is pulling some folk from the back and pulling them up to the front. Pack yourself in the house and say, God is talking about me. Tell them all the hell I've been through ain't, ain't for nothing. He gonna do something in me that ain't nobody never seen before. Now, here's how you know you qualify. You qualify when you fought some battles that seems to be uncommon. Because uh, you ain't just fighting people, but you fighting some animals that other folk are normally afraid of. Uh, is there anybody in here fighting some folk? Uh, and fight some things that seem to put fear in other people, but you've already overcome what's killing everybody else. Yeah. You overcame divorce. You overcame child loss. You overcame sickness. You overcame poverty. You overcame abandonment. You overcame rejection. 
in the midst of seeing the commotion. Now, all these other guys are trained soldiers, but all of them are scared. Watch this. They are trained, but scared. Watch this. Licensed, but scared. Positions, but scared. No Bible, but scared. Got money, scared. Status, but scared. Quote scripture, but scared. Look at your neighbor. And say, neighbor, I hope your knees ain't knocking. We almost there. We almost there. We coming down the lane. Training soldiers, but they're scared because now I gotta face something that I don't think I'm trained for. David comes and he sees all the commotion. And when he sees the commotion, the Bible says that he gives the brother the stuff. And he said, hold up, what's going on? Now watch this. The fight had nothing to do with him. The fight had nothing to do with him. But because he was in God's army, he said, I'm not going to let God's name go out like this. Is there anybody in here believe that there's still power in the name of God? That I'm not going to let his name go down. Not on my watch. I still believe that God has the power to do it seemingly. 